Ready? Go! A new record! Hello, pilots of the internet. Welcome to Foldable Flight. My name is Kyle, and this is where I teach you how to fold paper airplanes that will blow your mind. And in this video, I am teaching you how to fold this beautiful plane, the C6 Mantis. And you can see it really has this clean profile and slips through the air. This thing will fly over 100 feet, and a plane that looks this good and flies that well is irresistible to me. So hopefully you guys want to stick around and learn how to fold this as well. If you know anything about my channel, you know that in addition to making the folding sequence for a plane, I also love to create an illustrated template for all of the planes that I post to YouTube. And you can see here, this is, honestly, this is one of my favorite templates. I think this one turned out extremely well. And this is available to you if you support me on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash foldable flight. So head over there and check that out if you are interested in getting these downloadable templates for your paper airplanes. So let's see this plane in flight and then I will teach you how to fold it. fold C6 Mantis is an eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of paper. And you can see here I'm using Astrobytes paper. It's a little bit thicker than normal paper, which I like. It helps your planes fly farther generally. And so if you are interested in some Astrobytes paper, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But if you are using anything that is eight and a half by 11, you should be good to go. So let's just take this right edge to the left edge to start and we're gonna fold it right in half. And we'll open that back up. And next we just want to fold the top inch and a half of our plane down. And you don't have to fold exactly an inch and a half, just something between an inch and a quarter and an inch and three quarters will be fine. If you're using the template, it's scaled down a little bit to print within the uh, size of eight and a half by 11. So just fold the top down until it meets. There will be a point of a yellow triangle on the template. Just fold the edge right to that point and you'll be good. So again, eight and a half by 11, we're folding the top inch and a half down. And once we've done that, we're now going to fold this corner here right to the point where this edge intersects our center crease. And I'm actually going to leave just a tiny gap where that would intersect the center. I'm leaving just a tiny gap there. That'll help make a step in the future a little bit easier and the finished plane a little bit cleaner. So I'll do the same thing on the other side, trying to create a gap that is identical to the one I made on this side. Flip the paper over, and now I'm folding down like so. And basically I want this, this layer here that we created here, I'll show you on this side. I want my crease to run right where this layer is hitting the paper. So I'm flipping it over and I'm folding down until that layer, is, the edge of that layer is revealed. And I want it to crease right along that. Now you want to make sure that this center crease lines up with this center crease. And once you have that, you can crease all the way across here into the pockets. And then once you've done that, you can crease the pockets themselves. And something you wanna focus on is making sure that your crease goes right through the point of the pocket. Okay. 
having a little imprecision there isn't going to break your model, but having precision always helps your plane fly better in the end. And once we've done that, we can flip this back over and open this up. And now we're actually going to fold down on the crease we just created. And I want to reverse this crease here and this crease here. So what that means is that I need to kind of fiddle this. It's currently a mountain fold. I want to fiddle this right along the crease here until it becomes a valley fold. And then I can collapse this whole thing inward like so. And the plane should look like this. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the left side. The next step is just to fold this top edge here into the center. And I want to make sure my crease goes right through the point of this flap. And I will do the same thing on the other side. plane should now look like this. So now we'll open up the creases we just made. And the next step is just a little bit tricky. What I'm going to do is I want to point out two references first. You can see the point where this crease here intersects the edge of our plane. That's going to be one of our references. The other reference is this corner right here. Now I'm going to make the fold and then I'll explain to you exactly what I did to make it. Now you can see here what I've done is I've made sure my crease goes right through this corner of the plane. Now the slope here is determined by the fact that as I'm bending this over, I want to line this edge up with this point right here where this crease intersects the edge. So those two references, now you can see I can close this right over it and this layer sticks out right where this edge or this crease intersects the edge. So the slope of this line here, you can see the crease I've made, is going to change based on exactly how much you folded down on that first step where we I took an inch and a half. If yours was a little bit different, this line might actually look quite a bit different for you. It may slope from here to here, it may slope farther up the plane. But for my plane, the way I did it, it's going to be just like this. But the key thing is you want your crease to go through this corner and you want to land this edge on that point. And so once I've done this, I will fold the model in half like so, and use the side I just folded, you can see here, as a reference for folding this side because I want to ensure that I'm making a symmetrical plane. I'm just going to fold this to land right on top of the other side. Now, if your plane was already asymmetrical, it may be worth using the same references I used on the other side to determine the slope of this line. But if you have maintained symmetry so far, it is always better to maintain symmetry rather than follow a step exactly and end up with an asymmetrical plane. So you can see here, I've ensured my symmetry by just book matching it to the other side. And now I will fold back in on this and open up so we look like this. Now I guess I shouldn't have folded in yet because I want to show you something. Basically, we have these flaps here that we've created. And what we want to do with them is we want to tuck these flaps into this section of our plane. So underneath this central layer. 
the way we're going to do that is you can see kind of just by letting the plane sit free like this, this central section wants to kind of open up and that provides us an opportunity to swing the flap in just like so. And you can see when I flatten it, now this whole side's kind of locked into position. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm just swinging that in. Uh, you may have to bend it just slightly and tucking everything in to the nose of the plane. And now all our layers are nice and tidally locked together. I don't know if tidally is a word, but I said it. So your plane should look like this. Our next step is to fold the nose of the plane down. And we're not going to really make a crease here. We're just bending it at this point where you can still see this central layer peeking through right in that center gap. That's the point where you kind of just want to make what's called a pinch crease in the center, which is where you don't crease hard all the way across. You just make a fold and you kind of tack your finger right there. You can see you flip over. We have that point established now. We're going to do what's called a jet fold, which is where you take the central section of the plane and you kind of pushing down. And you can see here, I want to swing inward as I'm pushing down slightly. And what I'm doing is I'm gathering these layers into kind of this V shape. And once I get that V established, basically I want this to be the point at which everything's shifting. I'm just kind of pushing those layers together, pushing those layers together. And you can see once I get them narrow enough that I can pinch them between my forefinger and thumb, that's what I'm gonna do. And I want to land this corner right here. You can see I'm still just holding the plane like this. I want to land this corner right here on this edge of my wing. And once I do that, I will crease that side like so. And then I will flatten the whole thing. Again, I really want to control this layer here because it'll want to swing if I don't. So I'm gonna use my thumb right at that point and fold this down like so. And if that was difficult for you, I'll go ahead and uh, point out that there are some easy paper airplanes on my channel and I'm leaving a card in the top right corner. Uh, so you can try to fold one of those if this is too difficult for you. But also I'm going to take a second and kind of break down what has happened. In that step, all we did was create a crease from, again, this was the point where we kind of bent the nose of our plane down. The central intersection where that point intersects this center crease, we've just folded a line that goes from that point out down the wing in both directions. And these are mountain folds. And they're going to create the fuselage of the plane but really, I mean, you could track each one of these folds and just approximate each one. If doing that all together at once was too hard, you could fold each of these individually and still end up with the same result. So again, this is called jet folding the plane. And once we've done that, we're going to collapse the plane and lay it on its side like so. And our next step is to fold from the nose of the plane to this point right here where this top edge intersects our back edge. And I'm going to actually rotate it like this and just pull starting at the nose, finding that point right at the nose, and then also making sure my back edge goes right, the crease goes right through this edge, and I'll make my crease like so. And then I will flip it over and fold this side to match. I feel like it helps to start at the front just because that's where the thickest layers are. That's where the paper is going to fight you the most. And then you can kind of make sure that it's aimed at the right point in the back as you do that. And now you can see we are getting really close to having a finished plane here. This has the general shape of the Mantis. 
And now what we have left to do is first to lock the entire fuselage of the plane. And we're going to do that by just folding our wings upward and having everything lie on the side like this. And I want to fold this back edge here up into this section here. So I can see, I can kind of detect where the edge of this paper is, where this fuselage exists by looking at it. But if you can't, you can kind of just take this and push it up in there until it stops. And that's locked now, but it's not going to fly very well if we leave it like this. Next, we need to flip the paper over and fold it in again, taking this edge up to the same point we were doing on the other side. We're just going to fold this in. And again, I can kind of detect where that edge is. I'm going to go ahead and make my crease before I tuck it in. And then I will open this up just slightly, tuck that in. And now my fuselage is locked. So you can see what that did now. It's held these layers all together in the back so that the plane doesn't come unfolded as it's flying. So that's all good. So the last step, we're almost there. The last step now is just to fold our vertical stabilizers on both of these edges. So to do that, we're just going to fold this edge up and the crease starts right at that point here where this top layer is and goes back. And you want to try to fold it parallel to your central fuselage here. And once you do one, if you've maintained symmetry so far, you can just use that side to fold the other side and book match it as we've done several steps in this plane. go you have a finished c6 mantis and you can see it should have a really flat uh, wing angle from the back a lot of planes prefer dihedral angle we actually want this to be very flat and we want these vertical stabilizers to be exactly vertical and this plane uh, when you first throw it is very likely to roll so because of the way we locked this fuselage it's either going to spin this way or it's going to spin this way uh, because of the way we lock this and it's a little bit asymmetrical in the locking mechanism, it's going to cause a roll in your plane. So, uh, in order to fix the roll, I'm going to give you a really brief explanation here, but I'd also encourage you, I'm going to leave a card in the top right corner to my video on how to throw and adjust paper airplanes correctly. That'll give you a much more comprehensive education on how to get your plane to fly really well after you folded it. But uh, just to address that specific issue, if it's rolling clockwise like so, what that means is this wing is generating more lift than this wing. So what you need to do is fold the back edge of this wing up just slightly. And what that's going to do is it's going to, as air passes over this near wing here, as air passes over it, it's going to deflect off, here I'll show you, it's going to deflect off this bump that we just created in the back wing. And it's going to push that wing down just slightly. So whereas this wing was creating more lift and wanting to rotate the plane this way, now it's going to be deflected down just slightly and that should stabilize your plane a bit. You can also make rudder adjustments uh, if it's rolling this way, making a rudder adjustment that way by folding out just slightly on the vertical stabilizer can help to stabilize the plane as well. So you'll want to experiment with those things. If it's rolling counterclockwise, the opposite adjustments are true and will help. So uh, go ahead and give that a try. And if you're still struggling to get your plane to fly correctly, uh, be sure to watch that video on how to throw and adjust your paper airplanes. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are interested in getting more paper airplane content, be sure to subscribe by clicking on that icon in the top right corner, and you can check out even more of my content here with the video thumbnails. And if you really like what I do, head over to foldableflight.com or patreon.com slash foldableflight. And I will see you next time.